so from our rooftops and we have done one activity of disappearing trick of water so now from the activity 2 we will start today what we have to do in activity 2 we have to take two similar plates place one of the other plate in sunlight and keep the other under the shade simple thing we have to do two plates we have to take one we have to put in sunlight and one we have to put under the shade and in two plate uh, two plates we have to pour pour equal amount of water means the same amount of water we have to pour in that plates then uh, what we have to do then don't touch and uh, observe that plate which is poured with water observe and what will you observe that uh, two plates are there one is under the shadow and one is under the sunlight so uh, which uh, uh, plate disappear waters the plate which is under the sunlight will disappear water first and the plate which is under the shadow which appear this uh, which uh, disappear water after some time so what is the source of heat for this evaporation so the source of evaporate uh, source for the evaporation is the sunlight so during the day time sunlight falls on the water and in oceans river lakes and ponds the field and the other land area also receive sunlight so as a result what happened water evaporate from all the fields rivers lakes and the ponds and oceans then after that it is changes continuously in vapor and at the time in ocean there is a dissolved salt but whenever it convert or it is changes in the vapor salt doesn't get uh, doesn't change in vapor salt to convert into solid and water convert into vapor so in activity 2 did you find that water also disappear from the plate kept in the shade yes under the shade that we have a, we had put a water it will also evaporate but it will take more time which uh, uh, compared to the uh, plate which is put under the sunlight so th- though it could have taken more time does the heat from the sunlight reach here yes during the day time all the air surrounding get heat so all the air surrounding us get heat this warm air provide heat for evaporation of water in the shade thus evaporation takes place from all open surface of water as a result water vapor gets continuously added to air however evaporation of water is slow process that is why we rarely notice a loss from bucket of full water whenever you have put a full bucket uh, fill with water and you are putting outside or you, you are putting that uh, bucket of water uh, on the terrace or outside of the house we will never notice that the that uh, we have poured that water and after some time it is a less water in the bucket so this happens due to evaporation this happened due to sunlight this happened due to heat of the sunlight so as a result vapor get continuously added to air and water uh, vapor get continuously added to air that's why evaporation of water is slow process that is why we rarely notice that uh, loss from the bucket full of water so on heating water on a burner it evaporation takes place even faster on heating burner evaporation will get fast why because there is a heat more than a sunlight and it is faster that's why if heat is more temperature is more than our evaporation will get faster so is there any process through which water vapor get transfer into air 
so loss of water by plants so you have learned in chapter 7 that plants need water to grow plants use a part of this water to prepare this food and so before starting this here uh, buzo is there and uh, he had uh, thinking about something and he has been reading about transpiration he asked himself how much water is lost through transpiration by wheat plants that give us 1 kg wheat he found out that this is nearly 500 liters that is roughly 25 large size bucket full of water have you read this what that to he found that to grow one wheat 1 kg wheat how many liter water is needed 500 liter is needed means roughly near about 25 large large size of full of bucket so can you imagine amount how much amount of water is needed for 25 or 30 or 40 or 100 kg of wheat so forest crop grassland they are together and they are losing of water so how much water they are losing while they are uh, growing the plants so that we have to think and buzo is trying to show the result of losing of water from the plants so retain some of it in their different part remaining part of this water is released by plants into air as water vapor through the process of transpiration do you remember observing transpiration of water by plants in activity 4 in chapter 7 water vapor enters the air through the process of evaporation and transpiration is it lost forever no we get it back again so how are clouds formed let's see the activity number 3 how are the cloud formed after for formation of cloud we will see back to the ocean then we will see what if it is rains heavily and uh, we will see water cycle also okay so how are clouds form what we have to do in this in this activity we have to take a glass half filled with water and wipe the glass from outside with clean piece of cloth there is no any droplet of water that glass should be clean so now what we have to do add some ice into the water and uh, what for for two one or two minute what you will see you will see and you will observe some changes there is a droplets of water outside surf, uh, outside surface of glass so how can it happen have you ever think so from where do water drops appear on the out, outer surface of glass the cold surface of glass containing ice water cold surface of glass is containing ice water so it cools the air around that air around us and that air condenses on the surface of the glass we have noticed this process in condensation in activity 7 in chapter 5 ice and water droplets for figure 14.6 you can see now pahli is noticing something that uh, dew on leaves of the grass on winter mornings did you notice something similar on leaves or metal surface like iron grills and gates on the cold morning is this also due condensation yes it is also due to the condensation so do you see this happening on hot summer morning the process of condensation play an important role bringing water back to the surface of earth so how does it happen as we go higher from the surface of earth it gets cooler yes 
higher from the surface whenever we goes it gets cooler so the sufficient heights the air becomes so cool and water vapor present in condensed to form tiny drop of water called droplet when we go higher and higher in surface uh, outer surface of the earth sorry when we go higher surface of the outer surface of the earth the air will get more cooler and due to this uh, cool or uh, low temperature that air convert into water and that uh, water so as a uh, droplets on the object that is called condensation so it is this tiny droplet remain floating in the air and appear to us as a cloud is so happens that many droplet of water come together to form larger size drops of water so some drops of water become so heavy that they begin to fall these falling water drops are what we call rain in special condition it may also fall as a hail or snow so buzo has noticed fog near the ground in winter morning he wonder if this is also condensation of water vapor near the ground what do you think so thus in the form of vapor goes into air by evaporation and transpiration forms cloud and then comes back to the ground as a rain hail or snow evaporation and condensation in this module let us understand the natural phenomenon of evaporation and condensation as a result of a rainy day jay's coat gets wet now in order to dry it up he hangs the coat on the terrace roof Next morning he finds that the coat has dried up. Aren't you surprised? How could water soaked coat lose all that water? Let me explain you. The water in the coat has been converted into gaseous form and has been transferred into the air through a process called as evaporation. Thus evaporation is a process by which water is converted from its liquid form to the gaseous form. The process of evaporation constantly takes place in the nature. Do you know sun is the major cause for evaporation. Winds also contribute in the evaporation process. Thus we can conclude that the clothes would dry up faster on a windy sunny day than on a normal sunny day. Condensation process When water vapor is converted into water we call it the process of condensation. The process of conversion of water vapors into water is called as condensation. Do you know the process of evaporation and condensation creates a water cycle in the mother nature Now let us understand the water cycle Initially the water is converted into water vapors with the help of sun rays Due to the low temperature in atmosphere these water vapors are converted back to water by the process of condensation resulting in the rain Thus the water completes a full cycle from first being in the liquid form then converting into gaseous form 
and then finally converting back to the water form in the form of rain. So we can conclude that the process of evaporation and condensation is responsible for water cycle in nature. We have learned the process of evaporation, the process of condensation, the process of water cycle and the rain. It has dried up so soon. Where does the water in the wet clothes go as they dry up? At the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the process of evaporation and condensation, explain the process of cloud formation, describe the water cycle. Irene is preparing some black tea for her brother and herself. She boils two cups of water for 10 minutes. When she transfers the water into cups, the amount of water is reduced to one cup. Where has the other cup of water gone? On heating, water changes into vapor and becomes a part of air that cannot be usually seen. Now, let us find some other process through which water turns into vapor. Do you know what the process of water turned into vapor is called? On heating, water changes into vapor. This process is called evaporation. Water in the plate kept under the sunlight evaporates fast as water is heated more under the sunshine. During the daytime, all the air surrounding us gets heated. This warm air provides heat for evaporation of water even in the shade. This is the process through which water evaporates from roads, rooftops and other land areas. Similarly, due to sunlight, water evaporates continuously from various sources such as rivers, ponds, lakes, seas, etc. and as a result, huge amounts of water vapor gets continuously added to air. Water vapor enters air through the processes of evaporation and transpiration. Is it lost forever? No. Let's find out how it comes back. From where do water drops appear on the outer side of the bottle? Is there any leakage? No, there is no leakage in the water bottle. We all know that air contains some amount of water vapor in it. The cold surface of the bottle containing cold water cools the air around it and turns the water vapor again into water droplets. This process is known as condensation. Is this the reason we find few drops on leaves of grass on winter mornings, which cannot be found in a summer morning? Yes, even the vapor inside the polythene bag turned into water in the earlier experiment due to the same reason. This process of condensation plays an important role in bringing back the evaporated water into the earth's surface. We all know that as we go higher and higher from the surface of the earth, the atmosphere gets cooler. When the heated air rises up, the water vapor mixed with the air too rises up. When the air moves up, it gets cooler and cooler. At sufficient heights, the air becomes so cool that the water vapor present in it condenses to form tiny drops of water called droplets. These tiny droplets that remain floating in air and come together to form clouds. Many droplets come together 
to form larger size droplets and at a point of time they become so heavy that they begin to fall down. These falling water drops are known as rain. In special condition, they may fall as hail or snow. How does the water get back to its sources? Some of the water that falls on land flows over land surface and reaches the various sources immediately such as ponds, lakes and rivers. Most of the rivers cover long distances on land and ultimately fall into a sea or an ocean. However, water of some rivers even flows into big lakes. Have you ever noticed that a part of rainwater disappears on soil? Here, some of this water is brought back to the atmosphere again through the process of evaporation and transpiration and the rest of the amount seeps into the ground. Most of this water is available to us as groundwater. It can be drawn through the hand pumps and tube wells or bore wells. People in my city say that they need to dig big bore wells very deep to find water. Why is water found here so deep in the ground? In those areas where the land has little or no vegetation, the rainwater flows away quickly. Basically, the areas where most of the land is covered with concrete, rainwater cannot seep inside. This ultimately affects the availability of groundwater. Whoa! It is so interesting to know about water. Yes, it's really wonderful. Water from the ocean and surface of the earth goes into air as vapor, returns as rain, hail or snow and finally goes back to the oceans. This circulation of water in this manner is known as the water cycle or hydrological cycle. Okay, so as you have seen the difference between condensation and evaporation and then you have seen water cycle. So now come back to the oceans. Let's see article 14.4. What happens to the water that rain and snow bring the different region of earth? Almost all land surface are above the level of ocean. Most of the water that falls on the land as rain and snow sooner or later goes back to the oceans. This happens in many ways. So snow in mountains melt into water. This water flows down the mountain in the form of streams and rivers. Some of the water that falls on the land as rain also flow in the form of river and streams. So most of the river cover with a long distance on a land ultimately fall into a sea or an ocean. So, however water or some river flows in through lakes, the rain water, sorry, yes, the rain water also fills up the lakes and ponds. A part of rain water gets absorbed by the ground and seems to disappear in soil. So after raining or after snowing, uh, every drop of water, it comes back to the ocean. Whenever it rains, it comes back to ocean from river, from pond, from lake, for streams, from everywhere, the water comes back to the ocean. And if, the, if there is some regions, uh, they are considered as a snowy region, then that snow from the mountain will melt melt in water and that water come back to the ocean and some water gets into the soil some water are absorbed by the soil and from the soil that uh, also gets back to the ocean so some of this water is brought back to the air 
by the process of evaporation and transpiration the rest seeps into the ground most of this water become available as a ground water we are getting water from the well we are getting water from the hand pump like this these are called ground water which is absorbed by the soil many lakes as well uh, it is also this ground water which is drawn by hand pump or tube well the more hand pump or tube well that are used in area the deeper we need to dig to find this ground water see in some regions if there is a lack of uh, water then what uh, some buildings and uh, some people are what is they are doing they dig the bore as we know it bore well they dig the dig the dig they dig the pit and uh, from uh, for 500 to 600 feet down they get some water if they are getting the surface of water from there they uh, make a network of pipe and that network of pipe they are getting the water in the building so loss of loss in the level of ground water due to overuse is worrisome so we are uh, if we are not getting water as in some area or some region then where what we are doing we are digging the bore well and from the bore well we are getting some water that we are using in the building but in nowadays the digging the pit and uh, getting some water from the ground level it is overuse water is overusing right now so now it is worrisome because ground level is goes so much down so pahle wants to share a concern with you in those areas where the land has little or no vegetation the rain water flows away quickly flowing rain water also takes a top top layer of soil away with it there are few areas where most of the land is covered with concrete so this reduces the seepage of rain water into the ground which ultimately affects availability of ground water so we now know the that water brought back to the surface by the earth sorry of the earth by rain hail or snow goes back to the ocean thus water from the ocean and surface of the earth goes into air as a water sorry vapor return as a rain hail or snow finally goes back to the ocean and this circular sorry this circulation of water is the manner of known as a water cycle and this process is continuous process and from the active, uh, article 14.5 we will see in the next lecture take care